If I were to ask you, how would you describe God? What words would come to mind? The number one answer that people say is that God is loving. And this is true. The Bible says that God is love. God loves everyone, and that means that God loves you. Another answer that some people say is that God is holy. And this is true too. The word holy is just a churchy word found in the Bible that means perfect. And God has to be perfect logically. The Bible also says that God is pure, just, and fair. Now, I'm sure you would agree that people are not 100% loving, perfect, pure, just, and fair all of the time. So in comparison to God, we're imperfect. Generally speaking, people are independent and we tend to do things that are wrong. The biblical term for the wrong things that we do is called sin. And the word sin literally means to miss the mark. And we sin when our thoughts or actions go against or miss the mark of God's perfect standard. And lastly, though we often try to do good, we fail and make mistakes. So on one side, we see God who is perfect and loving, and on the other side, there's us who have fallen short of God's perfect standard. Now, almost every person I've met subconsciously senses this gap, and the Bible says that our sins have separated us from God. The Bible also says that the consequence of sin is death. And if you look into the word death, it also means separation. And the Bible outlines that there are three types of death. The first type of death is physical, and that's when the soul leaves the body. The second type of death is spiritual death. Now, although you may be physically alive like we all are right now, you may be separated from God or spiritually dead. And if our physical body dies while we're spiritually dead, that leads to eternal death or eternal separation from the love of God. Now, as humans, we have this natural desire to try to connect with God in some way. The most common way that people try to reach God is through religion. People try to go to church enough or read their Bible enough or pray enough in order to have a relationship with God. Now, these are all good things to do, but the problem is that these religious acts don't address the real issue, which is our mistakes. We can't be religious enough that we would never make a mistake again, and the thing that's causing the gap between us and God is our sin. Therefore, religion doesn't solve the problem. Another common way people try to reach God is through good deeds. They hope that their good works will earn them a relationship with God, but there are a couple problems with this thinking. First, how much good would you have to do to outweigh your sin? And the second problem is that doing good works still doesn't solve the main issue of our mistakes. And lastly, some people attempt to make up their own philosophy or moral code, which usually relies on some form of good deeds. But the issue here is that at some point, we all break our own moral code or philosophy, and then they have the same problem as we do here. They're in need of redemption for their mistake, just like you and me. So as we can see, religion, good works, and personal philosophies can't get us a relationship with God. So what can? The Bible says that there is nothing that we can do, but God, out of his great love for us, sent Jesus Christ to earth to pay for our sins. Jesus died on a cross as a payment for all our sins so that we could have a relationship with God. Now at this point, people often wonder, what's so special about Jesus? Well, first, Jesus is unique because he is God in the form of man. Second, he died to forgive us for our mistakes. And third, he rose from the dead, proving that he is the all-powerful God in human form and that his death was an acceptable payment for our sins. In the Bible, John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, if I were to ask you where you fall in this picture right now, would you say that you're on the people side, disconnected from God? or on the God side, rightly connected with him? Or maybe do you feel like you're somewhere in the middle? Well, wherever you feel like you are right now, the Bible tells us that God wants us to have a relationship with him and that it's simple to move to the God side. It can be broken down into three steps, kind of like an ABC in reverse. First, confess that you're a sinner and that you cannot save yourself with good works. Second, believe in Jesus Christ. The three things that you need to believe are that he's God in human form, that he died to pay for your sins, and that he rose from the grave, that he lives today. And lastly, accept the free gift of Jesus. If someone buys you a gift, it becomes yours once you take it or receive it. So the last part is accepting Jesus into your life and surrendering leadership to him. So now that you know that Jesus died for you so that you could have a relationship with him in this life on earth and forever, what would stop you from starting that relationship today? And if you do want this relationship, you can pray along with me and accept Jesus into your life. The important thing is not in the exact words that you say, but but it's rather about your heart. So dear Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and that I cannot save myself.
I believe that you are God and that you died to pay for my sins. I believe you rose from the grave and are alive today. I'm sorry for what I've done, and I accept you into my life and surrender leadership to you. Thank you for forgiving me, and starting now, I want to learn how to live for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And if you just pray that prayer with your heart, you are now forgiven and a child of God and will be with Jesus in heaven forever. Now, you may or may not feel any different, but the Bible promises that you have been saved. And if I were you, I'd look at my phone and write down the date and time on a piece of paper. And then I'd send an email to info at mcfcc.org so we can help you on your relationship with Jesus with things like, where do I even start reading in the Bible? Or, or how do I grow from here? Or, or what do I do now? And if you have any other questions, whether you pray this prayer or whether you're struggling to, uh, reach out to us and we'd be glad to listen and talk with you. So have a blessed day.